All right, this is Brother Watkins, and I am preparing this video to uh, help you as you study the preparation of the statement of cash flows. Now, we have already done one where we performed a direct method statement of cash flows, where you analyze each cash transaction and you uh, put it into the respective categories. Let's go over here. There's a balance sheet. We've got income statement, and what we're going to work on is preparing a statement of cash flows. So rather than to just look for transaction information, if we're starting with just the statements, the income statement and the balance sheet, we use the indirect method. And the indirect method says that we can start with net income. So if we look on our 2014 here, we see net income of 141. So let's do 141. Okay, so that is the net income figure from which we will derive the cash flows from operations. Remember, we're not going to figure out investments and we're not going to figure out financing. We're just going to get operations first. And so we have to look at the rules. And the first rule that we'll apply will be, let's put this, add back non-cash expenses. Okay, so our net income involved uh, potentially depreciation, depletion, or amortization. You don't actually write a check when you expense those things. So to make net income equal to cash, the first thing we have to do is put back non-cash expenses that we took out. So we have depreciation. Uh, we can see it right here. It was 100,000. 100, so we're going to add back 100,000. Okay. We also have Amortization. We could see that seven thousand came. Amor, uh, let's do this. Amortization, and we're going to add back uh, seven thousand for amortization. So right now, looks like we're okay. We don't have any more non-cash expenses. The next thing we would look for would be gains and losses. Okay, gains and losses don't involve real cash. They just involve the difference between book value and the amount you get on the sale of an asset. And the sale of assets is going, is going to produce cash that we're going to show down in the cash flow from investments. So what we're going to do here is we're going to whoops, subtract, so let me do this, I can't seem to turn on my italics here, there we go. We're going to subtract gains and add losses because the gain is just a paper gain. It's not cash gain. And a loss is just a paper loss. That's not an actual loss of cash. So if we look over here, we had a loss on sale of franchise rights of 7000 okay, So we'll put that in here. Loss on sale of franchise rights. And so we're going to add back that 7,000. All right, we don't have any other gains or losses. So now we go to look at our current assets. If a current asset increases, that means we put cash into that current asset and we're going to decrease the amount of net income. Okay, so let's look at that again. If any, if, uh, let's see how to say this. We're going to subtract increases in current assets. Okay. Now, just bear in mind that the direction that you're moving is opposite with assets. If your assets go up, your net income goes down. So now we have to look at the, let's see here if I can fold this up so that we can look at our balance sheet. There we go. So let's look at our balance sheet now. Accounts receivable goes up by 20000 Okay, That means that the cash didn't come out to, from operations. It's still stuck in that accounts receivable. So what we're going to do is increase in accounts receivable. It's wonderful that people owe us more money, but it doesn't produce any cash. So we're going to subtract that, and it's going to be negative 
20,000. Let's look at our others. Uh, do we have any others that go up? Inventory goes down, prepaids go down, and that is the total of our current. Remember I told you it's important to know when you're in current assets and when you're in non-current assets. So we're going to move on to the next rule, which is to add back decreases in current assets. I don't, I don't know about that word back. That implies something that's not quite the case. What we're going to do is decrease. Uh, any decrease is going to be added to our statement of cash flows because what that decrease did was shifted an asset balance. For example, when inventory went from 40 to 20, that decrease in inventory produced cash. We didn't have to buy $20,000 worth of stuff to sell it. We just took it out of the inventory that we already had. So let's add that $20,000 to our cash flow from operations. We have another decrease. And this is a decrease. Can't seem to get my decrease in prepaid insurance. Okay, so we didn't have to use cash to pay the insurance bill. We used an asset account, and that allows us to have more cash. So we'll take the prepaid insurance, which went from 15 down to 8. And since it decreased by 7, we do the opposite on the cash flow from operations. And that's now 27. Let's see. There's cash accounts receivable. Oh, and it... Please, cash is a current asset, but remember that the entire statement of cash flows is going to reconcile this difference right here in the cash. So we don't uh, concern ourselves with the individual cash account because that's the purpose of the whole statement. All right, so now that we've done all of our current assets, we're going to look at current liabilities. And current liabilities move our calculation in the same direction. So if we increase current liabilities, that produces cash because we borrow someone else's money. So uh, add increases in current liabilities because that basically means we use somebody else's cash instead of our own. So any current liabilities increased, accounts payable, increased from 30 to 130. So that means that we sold or we had $100,000 worth of something that we bought with accounts payable that we didn't use our cash for. So we're going to add back the increase. Try this again. Increase in accounts payable. All right, the increase in accounts payable is 100000 Right. Wages payable decreased. Okay. Uh, unearned revenue decreased. We have notes payable and dividends payable, but we know that any financing goes in the financing section, and the dividends, that's a non cash transaction. So an increase in the payable there uh, has to do with dividends, and we don't have to, uh, we didn't use cash for it, nor is it part of our operations. All we're looking at here are the regular liability accounts. Okay? A dividends payable is a completely different account with respect to your cash flow statement because it has to do with dividends, which are part of your financing activities. All right, so we do have some decreases. So we're going to subtract decreases in current liabilities. And one of the first ones we have is the uh, wages payable, so we have a decrease in wages payable, which means that we took cash to pay those wages. 10000 is going to be subtracted. And wages payable, let's see, rent payable, no change, so we're not going to do anything with that. But we had a decrease in unearned revenue. 
Okay, unearned revenue went from 5,000 to nothing. So we decrease the unearned revenue. Remember, liabilities go in the same direction. If they decrease, we subtract. All right, that is everything we need to do for cash flows from operations. And so now I can get to my bottom line here, and I can say, uh, why don't I just move this? And I'll put Alt-Enter and drag this all the way up. And it looks like cash flow from operations was 347000 So let's bold that for a dollar sign. All right. Now we want to look at cash flow from investments. Investments are any long-term operating assets that we've uh, changed over the time period of 2014. So we look over here, we see franchise rights. Franchise rights are a long-term investment. So we're going to say that we used, or we produced cash by selling franchise rights. So uh, cash from sale of franchise rights. And looks like we produced 15,000 in that year, so a decrease in franchise rights. Okay, uh, this would be cash used. Uh, okay, cash used to purchase equipment. Our equipment went from 350 to 475, so that cost us 125,000, and we'll indicate that. It does look like we sold land, so cash from sale of land. We got 200,000, not two million. 200,000. All right, so now we have cash flow from investments and this is going to be do all to equal sign looks like a 90,000 and we'll put a total format on that and on that okay so now we're going to look at cash flow for financing Financing is anything done to raise money. And if we look at our financing, we had a decrease in short-term notes payable. So cash to decrease short-term note payable. And it looks like we used 70000 for that. Let's format that. Okay, our next item was the long-term note payable, which increased cash from increase of long-term note payable. And the long-term note payable went up 150. Okay. And we look at our, again, it looks like common stock. Cash from increase of, actually it'd be issuance of common stock. Let's give ourselves a little more room. And we got 100,000. Make these all comma. All right. We ignore, well, we have to do paid in capital. Cash uh, from the issuance of common stock is from the paid in capital as well. Typically, you read these together. The paid in capital looks like it went up. Seventy-five thousand. So we should prop my out makes more sense to keep track of these together. So the cash 
and the common stock. Let's keep it in one number. All right, the last issue, we don't do anything for dividends payable, okay? Uh, we might make a footnote saying, by the way, they just declared a dividend, but we do reflect some serious dividends paid. that we would find in our, let me undo this, in our statement of retained earnings. We had dividends paid of 340000 So we're going to put that 340000 All right. So that gives us a total cash flow for financing, 85 thousand dollar use. All right. So now we have our three categories and what we're going to do is take our total change in cash put that up here. Our total change in cash is the sum of those three categories. So I take my cash flow from operations, my cash flow from investments, and my cash flow from financing. 352,000 Okay, so that 352,000 should, if we did it right, take us from 286.5 to 638.5. So let's double check that. Just take these, copy them. Okay, so I have this number. go back here. That number is supposed to be our t present cash and then we'll take from it the last one. So I say this 638 minus that 286 even though it's off on the other side it's 352 and so that reconciles. Ag ag again this 352 explains how we got from the cash in 2013 to 2014. This is a cash flow statement. So I'm going to post this key. Um, what you need to know, you need to know these rules. If you know these rules, you can take the amount of your net income and you can figure out what your cash flow from operations was. Then all you have to do is look at your look at your balance sheet account, see what happened with your long-term assets, and likewise the balance sheet accounts to tell you what happened with your debt and your stock, and then finally the uh, any dividends paid. And if we wanted to be completely accurate, we probably put a footnote here: uh, dividends declared but not yet paid, seven thousand. Uh, that's a small dividend compared to that 340, but it's there, so we might want to put that in. All right, that is an, in, an indirect preparation of a statement of cash flows. And remember, the indirect method only goes to cash flows from operations, and we finish up by just doing the direct method for the two remaining. Um, good luck with that. Email me if you have any questions. Bring, bring questions to class.